Okay, so the topic of this video today is codominance genetic inheritance. So let's get started. So if you watched my other videos, we've been learning about genetic problems with this fictional family here, the Henderson family. And we're here today because Sophia's had a close call. Their six-year-old daughter, Sophia. Turns out she was an, uh, a passenger in a recent car accident. She was riding with the parents of a friend when another driver lost control of their vehicle and caused a crash. Now she's recovering in the hospital now and she should make a full recovery, but she lost a lot of blood in the accident and she needed a blood transfusion to save her life. So here's the doctor that's been working with the Henderson family uh, throughout this particular story with this cartoon family. And he says, you know, due to her injuries, she lost some blood, so we had to give her a blood transfusion. And the mom says, you know, Sophia has blood type A. Uh, how did the transfusion go? Did the transfusion go well? And yes, in time, she'll make a full recovery. You know what? Let's talk about blood type inheritance. Blood type follows the codominant inheritance pattern, and that's kind of the topic of this video today. So we're going to learn about codominance kind of following blood type as our example. Well, first of all, let's look at the definition of codominance. It's when a single gene has more than one dominant allele. And we haven't seen that before with the other genetic patterns that we've learned so far. A good visual example of this is cattle coat, you know, the color of the fur of, let's say, cows. And pretend we have a male, a male cow that has a red coat to it and pretend we have a female cow with a white coat. Well, if they were to reproduce, what color offspring would we see? Well, if red were dominant, then you would predict the offspring would have a red coat to it. If white was dominant, then you might predict that the offspring would have a white coat on it. Well, what does codominance look like? If we're talking codominance, does the red and the white, do they blend together to make pink? As adorably cute as that would be, newborn baby cows having a pink fur color to them. No, that's, that's not what codominance is. In a greater visual example, codominance would look like this. This is the color pattern known as roan. Notice there are patches of red at the same time, patches of white. Both colors are equally expressed. Has red overpowered white? No. Has white overpowered red? No. They're both equally expressed at the same time. Okay, now we're going to focus on human blood types, but I wanted to go over that cow example first because it's more visual. Let's focus now on human blood types. Great example of codominance. Here we have a man and a woman. Let's pretend mom has blood type A. What the A means is that there are little proteins on the outer surface of her red blood cells. We call these just the A protein. Let's pretend uh, the man has blood type B. What that means is there are little proteins on the outside of the red blood cell, and we call these the B proteins. Well, if they produce a child, notice how the child would have type AB blood. Is A dominant to B? No. Is B dominant to A? No. We have a child with type AB. Both blood types kind of are expressed at the same time. Characteristics of blood type A from the mom and characteristics of blood type B from the dad. Now, so blood type AB is a great example of codominance. So let's look at blood types in a little more detail. In humans, there are three alleles for blood type. There's the A allele, which happens to be dominant. There's the B allele, which happens to be dominant. And then there's the O allele, which happens to be recessive. So what if the child receives an A allele from mom and an A allele from dad? This is homozygous. Two capital A's, we would call this homozygous, and the child would have type A blood. Well, what if the child receives a dominant A allele from one parent and a recessive O allele from the other? Well, A is dominant, so this would be blood type A. But because the child receives a dominant and a recessive allele, we would call this heterozygous. 
So when it comes to blood type A, notice there are two possible genotypes. There's a homozygous genotype and a heterozygous genotype. Well, what if the child receives a dominant B allele from each parent? We would call this homozygous. Homozygous for blood type B. What if the child receives a dominant B allele from one parent and a recessive O allele from the other? This is still blood type B because B is dominant. We would just call this heterozygous. So when it comes to blood type B, there are two possible genotypes that would lead to blood type B. There's a homozygous genotype and a heterozygous genotype. What if a person inherits two recessive O alleles from each parent? Well, we would call this homozygous recessive. And like we said earlier, type A and type B are dominant to type O. Type O is recessive. And so because the O allele is recessive, this is the only way to inherit blood type O. If your genotype is two recessive O's, that's the only possible combination that would lead to blood type O. Well, what if a person were to receive a dominant A allele from one parent and a dominant B allele from the other? This is codominant blood type. This is blood type AB. Well, we said earlier, type A is dominant, type B is dominant. They're codominant. And so, as our doctor says, this is the only way to inherit blood type AB. The only genotype possible for blood type AB is to receive a dominant A allele from one parent and a dominant B allele from the other. So let's come back to our family here. Dylan says, I, actu I actually have codominant blood. I am type AB. So in the pedigree for Dylan, I can label AB as his genotype. And Maria, the mom, says, well, I actually have type B blood. The problem is there's one, two. There are two possible genotypes for type B blood. Well, now she says, and my dad, my dad was type O. Well, that's very telling. If her dad is type O, then he would have passed an O allele to her. So she cannot be homozygous dominant. Maria must be heterozygous for type B blood. And so I can go ahead and label her, her circle in the pedigree as the genotype B with the recessive O. And the doctor says, well, now let's do a Punnett square. So there's the AB for Dylan. There's the BO for Maria. When I fill in the Punnett square, I can see there's a chance they can have a child with AB blood. There's a chance they can have a child with type A blood, although that's heterozygous type A. Here's the possibility that they have a child with homozygous for type B blood. And here's the possibility they could have a child who's type B, but heterozygous for type B. And the doctor says earlier, you said Sophia was blood type A. So that means, Dylan says, that means that I passed along my A allele to Sophia. And Maria says, I must have passed along my recessive O allele to Sophia. So in the Punnett square, I can see that Sophia has blood type A, but she must have the heterozygous version of blood type A. In the Punnett square, there's no other way to have type A blood in this example. And the doctor says, well, what about Nicholas and Joshua? Dylan says, well, I can see there's a 25% chance they could have type AB blood, one square out of four. Maria says there's a 25% chance they could have type A blood, one square out of four. And the doctor says, and there's a 50% chance they could have type B blood, according to this Punnett square. Two squares out of four is 50%. So here's a practice problem. What I'd love you to try to do is pause the video, read through that quick story, and try to answer these three questions. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. Okay, so the story says Mike is heterozygous for type A blood, and Lisa is heterozygous for type B blood. Now I can do the Punnett square. And when I'm done filling in the Punnett square, I can analyze it really quick. I can see there's a possibility they have a child with type AB blood. There's a possibility they have a child with A blood. There's a possibility they have a child with type B blood. And there's a possibility they have a child with type O blood. 
So look at question A. What's the probability of having a child with type A blood? I hope you see it's 1 square out of 4, 25%. For question B, what's the probability of having a child with codominant blood? You can see that's 1 square out of 4 as well. Type AB is the codominant blood type. And then question C, what's the prob probability of having a heterozygous child? Well, I hope you said 75%. Heterozygous means a different combination of alleles. And so 3 squares out of 4 is heterozygous in this example. Here's another practice problem. Pause the video and try to solve these three questions right here. I'm going to go over the answers in 3, 2, 1. So first of all, Jason and Maria. Circle for Maria and a square for Jason. Jason and Maria, they have a child by the name of Rick. So I think Rick implies a boy's name. So there's the square for Rick. The story says Jason has type A blood. But there's two possibilities for type A blood. But the story also says he's homozygous for type A blood, so he has to have two capital A alleles. Maria has type B blood, but there's two possibilities for type B blood. But the story says Maria is heterozygous for type B blood. And Rick has codominant blood. Well, that is type AB, so now we've got the genotypes of all three people. But now I can do question B. It says complete a Punnett square for Jason, two capital A's, and Maria, a B and an O allele. When I do the Punnett square for Jason and Maria, I can then analyze it, and I can see for question C, what are the odds that Rick would have type AB blood? From the Punnett square, you can see that the odds were 50%. There was also a 50% chance he could have had type A blood, according to the Punnett square. Okay, this problem's a little harder because it combines knowledge not just of codominance, like we learned today in this video, but also knowledge of sex-linked inheritance. So if you understand sex-linked inheritance and codominance, I'm hoping you can answer these four questions. Pause the video, try to solve them. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. Okay, so first of all, Let's focus on the codominant aspect of this question. I have a wife that has codominant blood, so she must have the A and the B allele. And the man is heterozygous for type A blood, so he must have the A and the O allele. When I fill in the Punnett squares for blood typing, that's what it should look like. Now, I transition over to the hemophilia portion of this problem, which is a sex link disorder. The story says the wife is also a carrier of hemophilia. So there's her genotype in the Punnett square. Now the man has no history of hemophilia in his family. So there's his genotype as it relates to hemophilia. When I fill in the sex-linked Punnett square, it should come out looking like this right here. Now I can focus on the probability questions. What is the probability? Let's get the first one of having a hemophiliac with type B blood. Well, the odds of having a hemophiliac are 1 in 4, but the odds of having a child with type B blood are also 1 in 4. So does that mean the answer is 1 fourth? No. What I have to do is multiply the 1 fourth of the Punnett square on the left by the 1 fourth of the Punnett square on the right. And when I do, I get the final answer of 1 16th. Look at the next question. What is the probability of having a hemophilia carrier with type A blood? Well, I can see the chances of having a hemophilia carrier are 1 in 4. The Punnett square on the right shows me that. But then uh, the probability of having someone, a child with type A blood, the Punnett square on the left shows me the chances of having a child with type A blood are 1 half. So I take the 1 half of the Punnett square on the left, times the one-fourth of the Punnett square on the right, and my final answer is one-eighth. And now the last one. What is the probability of having a, uh, a girl with type A blood? I can see the odds of having a girl are one-half, and the odds of having a child with type A blood are also one-half. So I take the one-half of the two Punnett squares, multiply them together, and the answer is one-fourth. 
So this picture right here is just showing all the members of the Henderson family that have been discussed over the course of uh, the, the four topics that we've learned, autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, sex linked, and then also today's topic of codominance. So despite the many struggles in the Henderson family, they are looking forward to their future. So I hope you found these videos helpful and thank you for watching.